ഹീം <laughs> respected brothers respected elders mothers and sisters listening at home the siege in madinatul munawwara to the residence of sayyidina asman bin affan radiyallahu ta'ala an began in the months of hajj zil ka'da zil hijja and the rebels had to be very precise the timing had to be very accurate to take over the city of madinatul munawwara to put an incursion in the city of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the best opportunity would be during the months of hajj and so the timing was very precise a think tank the sabai people the sabai sect the munafiqeen those that had a dislike for the companions of rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam knew for sure exactly that when they would enter madina towards the month of zil qaada madinatul munawwara would be empty majority of the people would be in the city of makka and would be there to perform their hajj and this was the practice of the arabs during the time of rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and also during the time of the khulafa ir rashidin that they would prepare for hajj immediately after the month of ramadan so zil qaada was the right time for them to enter in madinatul munawwara and these rebels in their thousands no one could even imagine that anybody would come to the city of madinatul munawwara where rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam is resting and someone would want to disrespect the city of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam remember all of the mujahideen and the muslim army was not in medina but rather towards the borders of the islamic khilafat and so madinatul munawwara was empty and so they came and they pretended that we are here with the intention only to perform hajj aliyazu billah but again this was just another smoke screen the intention was only to expel hazrat uthman bin affan radiyallahu ta'ala an from his position and so the timing was right everything was running according to the plan of these sabai people the sabai sect the munafiqeen those who disliked hazrat uthman radiyallahu ta'ala an and in fact they restricted every movement of hazrat uthman bin affan radiyallahu ta'ala an they did not even allow him to perform salah in masjid nabawi sallallahu alaihi wasallam to lead people to prayer as an imam being a khalifa and therefore he had no choice but to appoint someone as his deputy to be the amir and lead the hujjaj towards hajj and so his deputy was hazrat ibn abbas radiyallahu ta'ala an despite the fact that ibn abbas radiyallahu ta'ala an had the desire to remain in the company of hazrat 
Osman radiallahu ta'ala an and he knew what was happening in Medina tul Munawwara. But Hazrat Osman radiallahu ta'ala an insisted. And he said that a learned man like you, a Sahabi, you need to be an Amir and be my deputy, my Khalifa, and represent me in that year, the year 35 AH, that is uh, the Hijri. And Sayyidina Uthman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala an was in Medina tul Munawwara. Now for the rebels, the difficulty was, as time was passing by, when the month of Zil Hijjah came, people were performing the Hajj, they knew for a fact that they could not delay time. If they wanted to do something, they have to do it immediately. Very soon what will happen that the Hujjaj will be returning back to Medina Tul Munawwara. And of course there is a possibility that if this news was to spread that the Khalifa has been restricted to his own residence, maybe some individuals might form a, a group and come as an army into Medina Tul Munawwara to fight the rebels. So this was mounting pressure upon the rebels also, what to do. And so Abdullah ibn Sabah got his group and they did mashwara, what to do. And they decided that whatever they are going to do, it has to be done immediately. And aliyazu billah, aliyazu billah, these wolves that came decided to commit this barbaric crime to murder Hazrat Uthman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala an. Scholars have even mentioned the very historical khutbah of Hazrat Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an, his very last khutbah. And what a khutbah! This khutbah was not in the masjid of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as was the habit, but rather this khutbah was given from his house, from his front door. And he said to all the residents of Medina Tul Munawwara that I want all of you to come here and listen to me. Every single resident of the beautiful city of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Medina, Tayyiba, Taba, everyone came. Even Hazrat Ali, Radiallahu Ta'ala, and Hazrat Zubair ibn Awam, Radiallahu Ta'ala, and Hazrat Talha, the most senior companions, the Ashare Mubashara, all of them came and they sat around the house of Hazrat Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an. and Hazrat Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an looked at them and first of all he praised the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and reading Durood upon Sayyidul Awwaleen wal Akhirin Muhammad Mustafa Mujtaba sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said to the people, O oh people of Medina, this dunya is short, temporary, transient. Don't let this dunya distract you from the hereafter, which is eternal and everlasting. And then he quoted in front of them the verse of the Quran, and he said, وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّكُوا Which means, O oh people, hold on firm to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all together وَلَا تَفَرَّكُوا and don't disunite وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّكُوا and he said وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ كُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا and he said remember what Allah said that you were the enemies of one another and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala joined your hearts, Sahaba Kiram Ajmain, and you became brethren, and you became brothers of one another. You were at the verge of killing one another, at the brink of the pit of fire. And for anqadakum, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved you. And Allah says, Kadalika Yubayinullah. And these are the signs that I show you لَعَلَّكُمْ تَحْتَدُونَ So you may take guidance. And he read this ayat karima and a few other verses of the Qur'an and then he looked at the people of Medina. And remember that the Hujra, 
the house of Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala was very close to the masjid, to the rosa of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said to the people, by Allah, perhaps this is the last time you are seeing me now. By Allah, this is the last time that you are seeing me now. I bid you farewell and I say to you, Insha'Allah, I pray that maybe the man who comes after me also will be a good Khalifa and a man who fears Allah and a man who will follow the Sunnah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then he looked at all the people of Madinatul Munawwara. The rebels were there. And he said to the people that in the name of Allah, I say to you, I don't want no one to shed blood in the haram of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that I want all of you to go back in your homes. If you think I am the Khalifa of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and if you take me to be the Amir, then go back. Sahaba kiram ajma'een were actually in tears and crying. And they pleaded. And they said to Zat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an, Allah nuqatilu. Don't you give us permission to fight? Don't you give us permission to fight? And Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an looked at the people of Medina and said that no. I have made a covenant to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a promise that I will be amongst the sabireen. I will be patient. Wallahi, these were people who were prepared to give their life but they would not break the promise of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what a brave man he was already an army was there in Madinatul Munawwara but the people would respect the order of the Khalifa that he is still the Khalifa and he is saying no and listening to him is obeying Allah and his Rasul Remember, Usman radiallahu ta'ala an in, is amongst the Khulafai Rashidin. But despite Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an pleading to the people, some of the companions became so emotional. Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an went back to his hujra in his house. And you had the likes of Hazrat Hassan radiallahu ta'ala an who just stayed up at the front door, who was there, close to the front door of Hazrat Uthman radiallahu ta'ala, you had Hazrat Abdullah ibn Zubair, you had Muhammad ibn Talha, you had Marwan ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala, you even had the slave of Hazrat Uthman radiallahu ta'ala, and the youth that were there amongst the companions, and they said, no, we will be around here, and there was always, always a, uh, some kind of skirmishes and fighting between the rebels and also the companions that were there. Allahu Akbar, it was a very difficult moment for Sahabai Kiram Ajma'een. It is said that Hazrat Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an was inside and he stood up and he started reading the Quran. Quran here. Just give me this Quran. And we need to understand that Sayyidina Uthman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala an was a man who passionately loved the Qur'an. And he was a man who would complete the entire Qur'an in one rakat. One rakat. Allahi one rakat. And he would read the Qur'an in speed, very sweetly, swiftly. And he, subhanallah, the very first page I open is the surah that he read. The very first page that I open is the, the surat that he read, MashaAllah. And this is the surat that he read, Surah Taha. Surah Taha. And he started reading Surah Taha. Remember for 40 days there was a siege to his house. And for 40 days this 82 year old man had been fasting. This 82 year old man was fasting for 40 days and in the night he would complete one Quran and in tahajjud and they restricted water from this great man 
And it is said that during the last days of the siege, in fact the very last day of the siege, he saw a dream. And in his dream, he saw Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions, Hazrat Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu ta'ala an. And Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Ya Uthman, ta'al aftir alayna al yawm. Ya Uthman, aftir alayna al yawm. Uthman, I want you to break your fast today with me. Uthman, I want you to break your fast with me today and with your companions, as in Abu Bakr Siddiq and Umar radiallahu ta'ala. It is said that when he woke up, he said to the wife, Hazrat Naila radiallahu ta'ala anha, and he said to the wife that, get my best clothes, and the face was radiant and glowing. And she said, what is it, what has happened to you? And he looked at the wife and he said, Naila, I think today is the day of my shahadat. I think today is the day of my shahadat. And I think I have seen this dream today uh, in which Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was calling me. And he said to me that, Osman, I am waiting for you and I want you to do your iftari with me. And so Naila started crying. And so Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala answered that you start to cry. But this is something that I was looking forward to anyway. This was something that was predicted. This is my share. This is something that perhaps Allah has decreed for me. And he had read the entire surat of Surah Taha. And remember this surat is the very surat that melted the heart of Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala. It was this surat that melted the heart of Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an. And Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an completed the entire surat. And this is the first time signs of aggression were shown from these rebels, from these wolves that had never seen Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they did not know the status of Sahabai Kiram Ajma'een. And these were people who were just influenced by the Sabai sect. And they came and they wanted to break the door of Hazrat Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an's residence. And the man who was there fighting was Hazrat Hassan radiallahu ta'ala. Imagine that the Sabai people say that the man who should be the Khalifa is Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an. And that Hazrat Usman had usurped Khilafat in the wrong way. And Khilafat, and in fact, even Hazrat Abu Bakr and even Umar and even Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an. And the Khalifa should be Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an. And the son of Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an is the bodyguard of Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. It is said that when fighting had broken out, the first attack that came from the rebels, uh, it was very severe. A lot of the people were injured. But Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala very quickly then completed the surah and he finished off his salah and he went to the door and he looked at Hazrat Hassan and he looked at Marwan ibn Hakam, and he looked at Abdullah ibn Zubair, and he looked at Muhammad ibn Talha, and he looked at his slave Nujay, and he said to them, Allah, Allah, these are the words. He says, Allah, Allah, by Allah I have told you not to defend me. I have told you not to defend me. Have I not told you as a Khalifa, not to fight in the haram of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And I as a Khalifa, I give you an order, go away, go away, Allahu Akbar. It is also said that a man whose name was Mughira ibn Akhnas, Mughira ibn Akhnas, another sahabi of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he had gone to Makkah to perform hajj. When news was given to him of what was happening in Medina to munawwara immediately after hajj, as in he had shortened his stay in Mina. After Muzdalifa, he went to Mina 
And straight after Mina, he came to Madinatul Munawwara. He came to Madinatul Munawwara after completing his Hajj, and he got into the house of Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an. And he said to Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an, What face will we show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we don't protect you, the people of Medina? What excuse will we give to Allah on the day of Qiyamah if we don't do anything? That you are saying that all of the people should go back home. And Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an is saying, What I am saying to you is right. What I am saying to you is right. I don't want any from the followers of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the people of the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'at, to spill blood in the city of Madinatul Munawwara. No fighting. And when Hazrat Mughira ibn Akhnas was saying this, again another attack was launched by the rebels. This time it was quite severe, my respected brothers. Now they had start burning the front door of the house of Hazrat Osman radiallahu ta'ala again there was fighting it is said that three sahaba became shaheed and four were severely injured and from amongst those who were shaheed was even Mughira ibn Akhnas the man who came from Hajj to meet Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala he became shaheed and it is said that the companions who were severely injured amongst them was Hazrat Hassan radiallahu ta'ala his entire face was covered with blood. Hazrat Abdullah ibn Zubair had received more than 40 injuries, wounds to his body. And even Muhammad ibn Hatib was injured. Marwan ibn Hakam was also injured. And now when the door was burning again, Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala and got out. And this time he looked at the companions and he saw some of the sahabai kiram ajma'een that were shaheed. And this time again he got a bit angry. And he said to the people of Medina, I am your Khalifa, and I order you, in the name of Allah, by Allah, I want all of you to go. I want all of you to go, and for the sake of Allah, leave me alone. And for the sake of Allah, leave me alone. Go. And whatever happens will happen, and that is the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what I say to you, do exactly what I say. And this time even the senior companions decided and they took everyone and decided to go. And now there was no one with Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala and not inside and not even outside except for the rebels. And Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala and had put on his new clothes, beautiful clothes. And what he did is that he said to Naila, bring my Quran. And I want to read the Qur'an. And he said, in fact, I will open the door for the people. If they want to come inside, let them come inside. Because I am only reading the Qur'an, the Kalam of Allah. My respected brothers, this man uh, was such a bashful man. A man of haya. That he said to his wife Naila, that I want you to tie my clothes properly. What did he say? That I want you to tie my clothes properly. He did not want anyone to see his aura in case something was to happen to him. He did not want anyone to see his aura in case something was to happen to him. And so he tied his lungi, the clothes properly. And he sat in the position and he opened up the Quran. And he started reading the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Naila was at the back looking at this man, Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an. And the rebels, these wolves, bursted into the house of Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an. And the first man that came, he looked at Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an. Remember now all the companions were out. And he started pulling the beard of Usman radiallahu ta'ala an. And Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an looked at him and said to him, my son, don't you know that even your father gave respect to this beard? What did he say? He said, my son, don't you know, even your father gave respect to this beard. The best creation of Allah gave respect to this beard. And Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala was well known for his features. He was a very handsome man. 
and he had a very long beard and a very beautiful beard and when people would meet Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an because of a very beautiful beard people would actually touch the beard of Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala and he would say don't you know that the people of Medina would honor this beard that today you pull my beard and when he said that this man got scared and he looked at Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an and he left the house and then according to the different narrations my respected brothers two Egyptians came in and in another narration there was a man whose name was uh, Aswad, Mawtul Aswad his name was Mawtul Aswad rather that was a name given to him Mawtul Aswad which means black death Mawtul Aswad means black death and these were the rebels who came and they entered the house of Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an and some of them have said that they had an iron rod and they striked that iron rod at the head of Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an fell whilst the Quran was open and another man took out the sword and as he had pulled the sword Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an put his hands there to shield himself and what they did is that they cut off the hands of Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an and when they cut off the hands of Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an said that Wallahi this is the first hand that had written the Quran the Mus'haf that was revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and today you cut the hand of Usman that has written the Quran revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam but these were people who were blind these were people who were influenced by the shaitan these were people who had the hatred of sahaba kiram ajma'in and they came with this intention aliyazu billah to murder hazrat usman radiyallahu ta'ala an and then what had happened is that from from the side another man came and he started stabbing hazrat usman radiyallahu ta'ala an and he stabbed hazrat usman radiyallahu ta'ala an six times six times and he said to the people that i stabbed him six times three times for the sake of allah and three times for myself aliyazu billah i stabbed him six times three times to please allah these were the hooligans how foolish these people were my respected brothers they stabbed the son in law of rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then what had happened is that hazrat usman radiyallahu ta'ala an was now covered in blood and then they got on top of him and then this man took a sword and they put the sword on the stomach section of hazrat usman radiyallahu ta'ala an and they were going to pierce that sword all the way down and hazrat naila could see this and what had happened is that she came running and she started shielding the husband hazrat usman radiyallahu ta'ala an and she started crying and she started pleading to the people and she said in the name of allah have mercy on this man who is an old man have mercy on him this man would read one quran in one rakat and i am the witness of that and i plead to you and i beg you that leave my husband alone and when hazrat naila radiyallahu ta'ala anha came who are we my respected brothers little pain and taklif comes to us and we <laughs> say so many things what has happened my respected brothers look at the taklif and the test that these individuals went through khulafa'i rashidin in the city of madinatul munawwara close to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and when hazrat naila came what they did is that they cut off the fingers of hazrat naila a woman and they got hold of her hands and they cut off her fingers and she started bleeding and she said you cut off my fingers and then slowly what they did is that they put the sword and they pierced it into the stomach of hazrat usman radiyallahu ta'ala an 
and slowly the eyes of Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala and started closing and in fact nothing was to be seen everything was blood the entire face was covered in blood the body, the hands, every part of the body was covered in blood not an uff came from the mouth of this great man Usman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala an, and this is how this man departs inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un and Hazrat Naila is there when they saw that Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an has passed away they started screaming and yelling in the house and they said spread the news in Medina spread the news in the Khilafat in the entire Islamic Khilafat that you have no Khalifa and now you will have the right Khalifa and the man who had forcefully taken Khilafat we have killed him and Allah is pleased with us and they started looting the house of Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an, and they started burning the furniture of the house of Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an. and such were these people so lowly in their character that a man came whose name was uh, Safwan sorry, Saudan Saudan and he put his hands on the hips of Hazrat Naila on the hips of Hazrat Naila and this is the wife of Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an. these people had no respect no haya and this is in Madinatul Munawwara and he put the hands on the hips of Hazrat Naila and the slave of Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an saw this and remember you had these people and these were faithful individuals and I say slaves why Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an had given all of them their freedom all of them were free but they were so faithful to Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an that they stayed with him and Hazrat Usman had said to them not to do anything but when they put the hands on the hip of Hazrat Naila this man Saudan the faithful slave whose name was Nujay the name of the slave was Nujay he came and he attacked this man Saudan, the rebel, and he killed him. And so when the group saw that one of their men have died, Saudan, all of them ganged up on Nujay, and they killed Hazrat Nujay, the slave. So now you had the body of Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala, Shaheed, and you had the slave of Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala, and who was Hazrat Nujay. There was so much blood on the face of Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an that Hazrat Naila radiallahu ta'ala anha put a cloth on the face of Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an so blind were these people and in their arrogance Allahu Akbar that they pushed Hazrat Naila and removed the cloth from the face of Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an and they looked at Naila and one of them the accursed one slapped at the face of Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala and he said we want you to see the face of this man Allahu Akbar my respected brothers the son-in-law of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the Shah Waliullah Muhaddis Dehelvi rahmatullah alayhi said the only man in human history the only man in human history to have had this honor to marry two daughters of a Nabi to have married two daughters of a Nabi. No man in history holds this virtue except for Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an. And then what had happened, my respected brothers, they started looting and they even took off the simple jewelry that was uh, on Hazrat Naila. And then there was this man whose name was Qutair. Whose name was Qutair. Again he saw Hazrat Naila and he removed the jewelry and he also touched Hazrat Naila radiallahu ta'ala anha now what a woman Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an was 82 years of age 82 and disrespecting the wives of Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an. again another slave whose name was Subay what was his name? Subay one is Nujay and one is Subay when Subay saw that they have disrespected Hazrat Naila again he came 
and he attacked Qutair and he killed him. And when he killed Qutair, Allahu Akbar again the rebels came and they ganged up on the second slave whose name was Subay and they also made him shaheed. So now you have Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala and you had the three shaheed in Madinatul Munawwara uh, just before when the rebels had entered the house and the four who were severely injured but the, with the body of Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala and you also had the two slaves that were there and then they started looting even the Baytul Mal, the Muslim treasury that was in Madinatul Munawwara Allahu Akbar and they stood up and they said to the people of Medina that we will not even allow you to bury this man this man in Jannatul Baqi what did they say? that we will not allow you to bury Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala in Madinatul Munawwara when they said this this was very difficult for the companions of course now the companions were prepared to fight and get out and in fact what had happened is that you had Hazrat Umm Habiba radiallahu ta'ala anha you recall about Hazrat Umm Habiba radiallahu ta'ala and the story of Umm Habiba sitting on the mule and trying to get water giving water to Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala and she fell off and she nearly died uh, because of that and so Umm Habiba radiallahu ta'ala an came out in the streets of Madinatul Munawwara and she looked at the rebels and she said who will stop me from burying Usman radiallahu ta'ala an and she said if anyone stops me in Madinatul Munawwara remember I am the wife and the most beloved of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I will take off my parda in Madinatul Munawwara in front of all of you and she said to the rebels if anybody comes close and if anybody stops me respecting the body of Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala and if we can't bury Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala and I will take off my parda and all of the sahaba kiram ajma'een came together and this was not possible Hazrat Ka'ab radiallahu ta'ala and said if Hazrat Umm Habiba if she would have taken off her parda Hazrat Ka'ab said there is a possibility that immediately the azab of Allah would have come upon the people of Medina and it would have rained in Medina of stones but alhamdulillah this opportunity did not arise and eventually the rebels agreed and they said that we will allow Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala to be buried but we will not allow him to be buried in Jannatul Baqi we will not allow him in Jannatul Baqi now alhamdulillah even today where Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala is buried it is part of Jannatul Baqi now but during the Khilafat of Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu ta'ala and the section where he is buried that wasn't part of Jannatul Baqi but now alhamdulillah with the extension that is still part of Jannatul Baqi and the plot of Jannatul Baqi was actually the plot of Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala and the top section and even the lower section all belong to Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala he passed away at the age of 82 shahadat was given to him and he took shahadat with a lot of sabr without complaining without doing anything and in fact what he did is he said to the companions I want you to go back and leave me alone and let the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala befall on me Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to give him this position of shahadat and he became a shaheed it is said that Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala and passed away at the age of 82 and it was the shahadat was on the 18th of Zilhijjah on the 18th of Zilhijjah the year 35 and all of the companions played janaza namaz behind Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an. according to the narration uh, some people have said that Hazrat Hassan or Hazrat Hussain or even Hazrat Ali had prayed the janaza namaz but perhaps the strongest narration is that which is mentioned in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal in which he said that the janaza was led by Hazrat Zubair ibn Awam radiallahu ta'ala so Hazrat Zubair ibn Awam radiallahu ta'ala and have led the janazah namaz of Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an, and that was also the wish of Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an. that is the shahadat 
of this great man, the son-in-law of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Insha'Allah ta'ala, in our next session, I will also explain to you what happens of these individuals, the perpetrators, the people who played a role in assassinating and murdering Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an, and what was the reaction of the companions and slowly moving on to the Khilafat of Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen duakallahu اللهم صل على سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وسلم تسليما اللهم تقبل منا وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم نستغفرك ونتوب إليك سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله لزيم اللهم اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غل للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف الرحيم سمعنا وطانا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير برحمتك يا رحمة الله